Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be such a fun one. It is going to be my top 24 books of the year. It's actually exactly 24 books because for two months I didn't read non-fictions and I have two honorable mentions. Um, so it's exactly 24 books. We're actually just really gonna get started in this video. I have a fun activity. So I couldn't just like sit down and think of what's my favorite book. I actually had to make a bracket. I'm gonna sit to the side because I'm gonna try to insert it right here. This is what it looks like right now. I don't know if you guys can exactly see it. Looking down, I'm looking at my iPad because I have the bracket and I'm actually going to start a time lapse so you guys can see me writing on it. Okay guys, so yeah, I have an entire bracket. Shout out to Ella. I'm gonna try to display it right here. If that doesn't work, I apologize. Figure it out one way or the other. So yeah, let's get into my top 24 books of 2021. As you guys can see in my little bracket, sorry if I just zoomed in, I'll probably be zooming in that way you guys can better see it. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard to explain this bracket, but one side is all the fiction books I've read, and then the other side is all the nonfiction, and then we'll compare the two, and then we'll figure out the winner. So basically, I'm just going to go month through month, fiction, and then nonfiction, um, and yeah, let's get into it. For the first bracket, my first, actually, this was my first science fiction, and I think the only science fiction I've read in a very, very long time. It was my first five star of the year, and that is Dune by Frank Herbert. I borrowed this book from my boyfriend, so I don't have the physical copy, but this book was five stars. It was so good. I read the, the two first books this year, and I really enjoyed it, and I definitely would recommend that one if you're wanting to get into science fiction. I will say that I did watch the movie and it is one of the best adaptations I've ever seen so I would also recommend that. And my book for February was Beach Read. This was my first Emily Henry novel. I read a physical copy. I listened to it. I think I listened to it in one day. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't even know why I decided to read this because it wasn't like when it was super popular if I'm remembering correctly because it was in February. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was popular, but I feel like I kind of got on the hype before. I really like this one. So the winner out of those two, I think it's going to have to be Beach Read. I know those two are very different, um, but Beach Read is just calling to me. And then my March book was It Ends With Us. We'll come back to that bracket though. Um, I don't have the physical copy because I actually lent it out, but yeah, okay, let's move on. For April, my fiction book was Daisy Jones and the Six. Taylor Jenkins Reid was my favorite author, actually, from 2020. So I was so excited to read this one. Um, I think I rated it four out of five stars, but I think I would actually rate it five out of five stars. This book is so good. Um, I really enjoyed the interview style that it was. Um, shocking plot twist, very, very good book. And then my May fiction book is actually The Hunger Games. I decided to reread the series this year so I could um, read Ballads and the Cert Songbirds. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes or something like that. But yeah, so these are my two. I feel like these are so hard to judge. Um, I think I'm going to have to say Hunger Games though. I'm sorry. I feel like that's not fair because Hunger Games has had its craze time but if i had to pick that would be it and then my june book was ugly kind of sticking out my june book was ugly love by colleen hoover and this was my second book by colleen hoover um i read it ends with us like i said in march and also i feel like i read it ends with us in a time that it wasn't super popular on a book talk it's thanks to my roommate from last year kristen she actually recommended that book to me and it changed my life it changed who my favorite author is and anyways yeah july fiction is act your age e brown this was my favorite book of july i had a really hard time picking this one but out of all the books like this book just made me feel something my favorite book out of the brown sister trilogy um and i just love this one so much it's like perfect grumpy sunshine romance slash enemies to lovers slash workplace romance 
I would definitely recommend this. This is like a 5.5 stars. I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel like my description of that, you guys, even on the next one, it's not even going to matter which one wins. But for August, my pick was They Both Die at the End. This was a five stars for me. Um, personally, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really neat. I was shocked by the ending. I mean, obviously, I knew they're going to die. And that's not a spoiler because it literally says it. Um, what I was shocked about is how they died. I wasn't expecting it, and I thought that was really interesting, but anyways, yeah, I really like this one, and obviously my winner is actor A.G. Brown. My September pick was Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I believe this was my third book by them. Super good. Five stars. We'll get to that one. Next we have my October pick. This was a five out of five. It was a vampire story called Carmilla. I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, my October picks were like really short, so that's why I chose this one. I feel like if I had more selection, I wouldn't have chosen this one. But since I did do it in the ranking that I did, this is my October book. Really enjoyed it. It's a classic. It's before Dracula. So yeah, I really liked it. Um, kind of like a lesbian vibe if you're interested in that. The next book I have is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This book was so good, guys. I'm not even going to talk about it. I already know which one is winning it's it happened one summer okay so now we're gonna go back and do this again so for my february and march those are the two competing um it ends with us oh my gosh guys i can't even explain that one is immediately the winner because um that book just traumatized me i listened to it and then i reread it actually um, and I just can't explain it. I will say look up the content warnings. I feel like that's very wise to do before choosing to read this book, but I just thought it was really good. Sure, it's a cliche, like, there's, it's like, there's like, there's cringy stuff in the book, but it's still so good, and I will never stop talking about it. I think it's one of my all-time favorite books. And then I have Hunger Games and Ugly Love. Ugly Love is going to win. Um, honestly, I have a hard time, I'm gonna have such a hard time between It Ends With Us and Ugly Love. Um, I actually was talking to my friend Libby about how those two were, like, in the top two, and look, here, now they are against each other, but we'll come back to that. Um, next I have Love In Other Words and Actor Age. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so hard, because Actor Age, E. Brown, just really struck me, but Love In Other Words, Love In Other Words is just such a good book. Um, I really love it. Um, and then actor A.G. E. Brown is just like, I think I had to go with Love Your Love in Other Words just because this book, I read it in one sitting, it absolutely crushed me, like, my soul, like, was, I don't even know how to explain it, but Love in Other Words is a winner. And then we have It Happened One Summer and Gone Girl, this was my December book. Um, both of these are really good. They're different categories. I'm gonna have to say it happened one summer because I am a romance girl, so. Okay, guys. <gasps> this is so hard. Okay, so now we have what was my March pick and then what was my June pick. Guys, I feel like this is controversial. We know everything about it, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Ugly Love. I feel like this is so controversial. They are like tied, like they are two of my favorite books. But Ugly Love, the way it left me feeling was, the it ends with us and Ugly Love left me feeling like very devastated. I love the book, I love the romance. Obviously both of them were heartbreaking, but I just really, really loved Ugly Love. Like the way it made me feel was just a different way and I think I have to go with Ugly Love. Then Love in Other Words and It Happened One Summer. I have to go with Love in Other Words because Love in Other Words also gave me the same vibe that Ugly Love did. So, I don't know. Guys, I think this is actually the hardest thing I've had to do picking between these two books so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them so Ugly Love is a uh, brother's best friend friends with benefits um, unrequited love I think maybe you could describe it as that 
um definitely heartbreak devastate um the cover guys if you read this book the cover i'm sure you understand it love in other words is a childhood to childhood friends to romance to enemies like fallen out to lovers again unrequited love also um also tragic and heartbreaking um so i have some really good contenders but guys i think i have to pick ugly love i think ugly love was my favorite fiction of the year and i feel like this is just such this is such a hard like if you guys have read these i'm sure you guys understand how hard it is to pick between these two but i'm going to have to say ugly love and i feel like that might be because um colleen colleen hoover is my favorite author of the year so that could be a bias but let's move on to nonfiction. so i'm pretty sure i already know the winner but we are going to go through the entire process For most of the months i made it a goal to read one nonfiction every single month i did that every single month besides two and so a lot of these i didn't have choice i just did the one nonfiction that i had read that month so if that's explaining like oh th that's kind of weird like why would you pick that um it's literally just because i made it a goal to read one nonfiction. so there's only one nonfiction option and you guys will see that very prevalent as my first book is a devotional um, by lisa turkhurst i really like it five stars but like this isn't typically a book you would recommend um but yeah this is my january pick and then my february book um is know my name by chanel miller um this book was devastating um like hardest book i've ever had to read but just one of the best books ever it is about the brock turner um case um definitely content warnings i listened to it because i wanted to hear her she she read her book and i just thought it was so powerful and so because of that know my name is definitely um definitely the winner for april i have strong it's another devotional um and then actually for may i didn't re read one so strong is obviously the winner for july it was mountains beyond mountains i borrowed this from my boyfriend's dad this book was super good it's by tracy kidder um it is he's an anthropologist and a doctor and so it kind of tells you about his story and i thought it read like fiction and i really enjoyed it it was such a good book i read it at four stars august book was the glass castle this is one of my favorite memoirs um by jeanette walls the movie adaptation is super good this is just so good this also reads like fiction um i would 100 percent recommend this one i think everyone should read it in their life i've read it twice and enjoyed it thoroughly both times i will have to go with the glass castle between these two my october was women don't owe you pretty by florence Ginnon. this is a feminist book i 100 percent recommend this book it's so good and also the illustrations are just so fun and i think this has some really good tips in it oh i did read a nonfiction. i read gay awareness but i thought it was so bad i didn't include it so i actually um read a nonfiction every single month besides may i'm actually very proud of that um anyways yeah we're not even going to talk about that book that's the worst book i've read ever so we're not even going to talk about it so i have white fragility this book was five out of five i listened to it it basically was talking to white people and systematic racism institutionalized racism racism that you don't recognize that you have i definitely thought i learned a lot from this um and i thought it was really good and then i have know my name as the other book know my name still wins have strong we have my body keeps the score this book was really good it is about trauma and how it affects your body i will say this author has allegations against him i did not know that um but i did put it down because it was the only book that i read in june for nonfiction. um i also thought he had some good information in there it just makes it weird because he talks about trauma um based on the things that he was alleged to do wrong so i think that's really interesting i would definitely do more uh, research and because of that i'm just gonna go with the devotion as better just because i am putting my bias in it september book was another memoir by dolly alterton it's everything i know about love i thought this one was really good um but it's going to get against the glass castle memoir and i'm gonna have to go with glass castle and then my december book was didn't see that coming this is another um controversial author i only chose it because it was the only book i read in december so i am going to pick women don't Are you pretty that book was 
by far better anyways my name is strong no my name wins castle and women don't owe you pretty i'm gonna have to go with glass castle i'm sure you guys could tell by my rant at the beginning but no my name is obviously the winner top two books was ugly love for fiction and then for nonfiction, know my name both of those are so good i feel like i can't pick because if i had to pick i'm gonna pick chanel miller's know my name as a winner so i guess i will put that on there oh guys we have the complete bracket oh my gosh i really hope this works out to where you guys can like see it right there yeah that is my complete um what i read i showed you guys 22 books right there and so i'm going to show you guys two more honorable mentions these books were also very good um top of the list they just didn't meet the favor of the month so for september i read the love hypothesis this was five out of five love and other words just like knocked it out of the park i really enjoyed this one it was my book of the month um stem romance it was apparently fan fiction i didn't know about that so you don't have to worry about it unrealistic but still super good and cheesy and romantic and i read in one sitting remember when i read verity i think it may have been july um so i don't know what book beat it out but oh act your age eve brown beat it out um so yeah this one was super good i had to set it down multiple times because it was just so disturbing and it was a thriller romance and i really loved it and if you guys haven't read this or have read this what um teen are you on without spoiling i am teen manuscript um i just don't believe it's teen letter like no if you're a teen letter i don't understand anyways guys that is the end of this video i am so glad you guys watched let me know what your favorite book of the year was i would love to hear it i'm very excited for january's reads and the rest of 2022 what i'm gonna read um sorry this video is out in january anyways i'm going to go have a very good day peace and love bye guys i just want to say thanks to ella for creating the bracket and my brother for helping me get all the books and then my dad for fixing my fans so it's not super loud bye